So good morning, everyone, and welcome to this lecture. This is uh, lecture number three, and we are dealing with uh, semiconductors. If you remember, in the last lecture, we had dealt with the different types of p-n junction diode. We had seen uh, their characteristics, basically the forward characteristics, the reverse characteristic, when it is forward bias, when it is reverse bias. We had seen is use. We had seen how we can use it as a rectifier. How we can use it as a half wave rectifier. How we can use it as a full wave rectifier or a bridge rectifier. We were dealing in the last class, in the last topic. We were dealing with special type of uh, PN junction diode. And we had seen a Zener diode and we had seen a Zener diode. The function of a Zener diode is that it can regulate voltage. It can keep the voltage constant. If a Zener diode is connected between two points, it can keep... Uh, the voltage constant it is used as a voltage regulator and it always uh, operates in the breakdown zone do we remember this yes sir so whenever you see a zener diode and you see it connected that means the voltage will remain constant uh, just to give you an example i will Take a question from uh, J. Main of 2022. And remember, the diagram may look a bit uh, frightening, but it's a very, very uh, simple question. And the diagram looks like this. This is from J. Main of 2022. So the question goes like this. In connection with the circuit drawn below, the value of current flowing through the 2 kilo ohm. What is the current flowing through the 2 kilo ohm register? Something is drawn here and something is given here based on that drawn thing and that something I hope you can give me an answer. I'll give you a minute to give me the answer. So how are we supposed to do this? You can see that the voltage of the Zener diode is given as 5 volts. It will operate in that region. So voltage drop, voltage difference between the points A and B would be 5 volts. That means the voltage drop across these two points would also be 5 volts. V is equal to IR is the only formula that we have seen. So from there, you can find out the value of current V by R. V is 5. Resistance is 2 into 10 raised to the power 3. So your answer will be 25 into 10 raised to the power minus 4 ampere. So here it has to be 25. That was the answer that we were looking at. I hope you have understood this question. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. Then again, I'm going to take one more question. From the same year, J. Main of 2022. And this is more a question based on your uh, information. Based on your information, a Zener breakdown occurs in a PN junction. In which type of PN junction diode or a Zener diode, how it is made? What is the quality? 
whether it is lightly doped whether it is heavily doped whether it has wide depletion layer whether it has a narrow depletion layer so you must uh, <clears throat> remember this this is a knowledge based question and you write it with the zener diode a zener diode is heavily doped and it has a very narrow depletion layer so whenever you make a zener diode it must be heavily doped and it must have a narrow depletion layer this is one quality of uh, this is one quality of zener diode that you must uh, remember moving ahead i'll give you one more question so that i am sure that you understand what is a zener diode and what type of question comes in a zener diode this is the next one again taken from je main of 2022 A zener diode has a VZ breakdown voltage, zener voltage of thirty volt. The current passing through the diode, the zener diode, in the following circuit is how much? I'll give you two minutes to give me the answer. so how are you supposed to do this uh, between these two points point a and point b how much will be the potential drop can you tell me 30 30 volts because that is the zener breakdown voltage so that means the potential difference between this point and this point will also be 30 volt yes or no yes sir so you can find out the current in this branch let me call it as i1 you can find out the value of i1 how much will be i1 equal to sir i1 is 6 i1 means uh, this current this pink current is i1 do we understand this yes this current i1 will be equal to 30 divided by 5k so it is 5000 Thirty divided by five thousand, so you will get six milliamps. I think. Yes. yes no? Six milliamps, but that is not what is asked. It is asked that what is the current in this branch? If I call this branch as the green branch, you have to find out the current in this green branch. Now, how will you find out the current in this green branch? If I say. that the current in the blue branch is i in the pink branch i1 goes so how much current will come in the green branch 90 in the blue branch the current is i in the pink branch i1 current has gone what would be the current in the blue branch no oh, current in the blue branch is i what will be the current in the green branch it would be i minus i1 now if i can calculate the value of uh, i i should be able to calculate the current in the diode do we understand this yes how do i find the current now remember 30 volt is the potential difference between points a and b yes or no yes but the total potential difference if i call this point as c and this point d the total potential difference between point c and d is 90 volt yes or no yes sir that means my dear friends the pot potential difference between point c and a or for that matter between points d and b 
would be 60 volt we understand this yes sir now if you know that uh, this potential difference is 60 volt you can find out the value of this current can you tell me the value of i1 uh, can you tell me the value of i 60 what will be the value of i 12 .1. can you now tell me the value of i The 15. It would be 60 divided by 4. 4. Not 4. Ah, 4,000. 60 divided by 4,000. Yes. I think you will get uh, 15 milliampere from here. Yes, sir. 15 milliamps. Now, since you know that the value of I is 15 milliamps, the value of I1 is 6 milliamps, you can tell me what is the current in the diode. How much will be the current in the diode branch? 9, sir. 9 milliamps. Current through the diode would be 9 milliamps. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. Since you have understood this, I have one more question by chance, luck by chance, that is there from the same session, same year, the year of 2022, and I will present this question to you, and I hope that I get an answer for this one. The value of power dissipated here they are asking they are asking power dissipated across the zener diode the zener voltage is given as 15 volts connected in line as shown in the figure is x into 10 raised to the power minus 1 watt what is the value of x the resistances are given i'll give you 2 minutes to give me the answer for this one Yes, do we have an answer? So if I call this current as the blue current as I, the current in this branch, the pink current as I1, and the current in this branch, the green one, as I minus I1, what will be the value of I1? The potential drop is 15 divided by 90. So I think it would be 1 by 6 ampere. We understand this? <laughs> The potential drop across these two points, total potential drop is 22 volt, 15 volt is there. So this would be 7 volt. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. And the current is approximately 2.1. The current would be potential difference 7 divided by 35, my dear friends. So it will be 1 by 5 ampere. So the current in the green branch, the current in the green branch would be I minus I1. That would be 1 by 5 minus 1 by 6. And that I think is equal to 1 by 30. 1 by 30. Yes. But we have to find out power. So power is V multiplied I. by I. Voltage is 15 mm -hmm. multiplied by 1 by 30. So the answer will be equal to 5 into 10 raised to the power minus 1 watt. Five. The answer is 5 because it has to be x into 10 raised to the power minus 1. So the answer is 5. This is how questions are framed. I hope we have understood this.
you can expect some question from this type coming in your exam. <clears throat> Let us move ahead and see the next type of uh, diode. The next type of diode is known as a photodiode. The second type of diode is known as a photodiode. Now, what is a photodiode? Anyone has uh, heard the name photodiode? Anyone heard the name photodiode? No one has heard the name photodiode. A photodiode <clears throat> is a diode where when light falls on it, it is made from a photosensitive semiconductor and it is a reverse biased PN junction. It's a reverse bias PN junction. This is a photodiode. Remember, this photodiode is a reverse bias. When light falls on this, there is a current that flows. When you are uh, intensity of light increases, the current also increases and therefore this is used to detect, it is used to detect intensity of light. So this is what you must remember. What is the use of a photodiode? The full use of a photodiode is to detect the intensity of light. It is a reverse bias PN junction and it is made from a photosensitive semiconductor. These are the three things that you must remember about this. You can also draw a diagram so that you remember that this is a reverse bias. I'll give you a minute to note this down. The next device, you may call it as the reverse of a photodiode. It is a LED, LED, light emitting diode. It's a forward bias PN junction. Remember, PN junction is forward biased. When it is forward bias, it will release energy in the form of light. And therefore, it is known as a light emitting diode or LED. What you must remember that it is forward bias. The diagram is there. When it is forward bias, it releases energy that is in the form of visible light. And therefore, it is known as light emitting diode. I'll give you a minute to note this down. The next type of device is a solar cell. This is the symbol of a solar cell. When the solar energy, light energy, radiation fall into it, it converts this light energy into electrical energy. We see this, we know this, yes or no? There is no external bias that is applied. Just if you remember these two, three things, that would be good enough. I'll give you a minute to note this down. Everyone understands this? Yes. And remember here, it's a junction diode where one of the P or N junction is made very thin. One of the junctions is very thin. They are asking you questions based on knowledge these days. So this is an important point that you must remember. I'll give you a minute to note it down. Then you can also note down this, may not come. Uh, variable capacitor, a PN junction diode, also acts as a capacitor. This uh, depletion layer actually acts like a dielectric and this is the symbol. 
this diode uh, LED can also be used as a laser. You may not know this. You can just write that this PN junction can be thought of as a capacitor. It just gives you a minute. And this is just all the four diodes written in one column. Zener diode. This is the symbol. Heavily doped with narrow depletion zone. It operates in the breakdown zone. It acts as a voltage regulator. LED, light emitting diode. Then we have photodiode. It operates in reverse bias. The green one operates in the forward bias. Solar cell, when light falls, it converts solar energy into electrical energy and there is no biasing. We all remember this? Yes. Okay, I'll give you a minute if you want to note it down. You can note it down. The next heading is the transistor. Now, in olden days, when there was no TV, uh, people used to listen to radio. They used to call them transistors. This is not the transistor that we are talking about. We're not talking about a radio transistor. What and what is the transistor that we are talking about? It's an electronic device. It's a three terminal device. P in junction has got only two terminals. One at P side, the other one at the end side. This is a three terminal device. What does it do? It transfers a signal from a low resistance circuit to a high resistance circuit. How it is formed. One type of extrinsic semiconductor is sandwiched between two thick layers of other type of semiconductors. So it could be a P type sandwiched between two N types or N type sandwiched between two P types. Do you see here? Yes. The first one. The first one is a NPN transistor. We do we see this? The second one, the green one, is a PNP transistor, where N type is sandwiched between the two sides. And the N type is sandwiched between two P types. Do we understand this? Yes. The left one is known as emitter, the middle one base, and the right one collector. Emitter, base, collector. Do you understand this? Yes. This is the symbol for the NPN transistor. This is the symbol for PNP transistor. Remember the direction of this current. You can see this direction here, arrow sign here. Yes. It's always from P to N. Do we understand this? Yes. Everyone understands this? Yes, sir. Okay. P, N, P transistor. It has got three different elements. The first element is known as emitter. The second one base and the third one collector. We will come to that. First, you need to note the point that I've given and draw the diagram. I'll give you two minutes to do this. As we have seen, there are uh, three uh, extrinsic okay. semiconductors. The first one is known as emitter, and you will have to note down its properties and remember them very carefully and do not make a mistake. Emitter is the leftmost part. It is known as emitter because it emits majority carriers towards base. Emitter, it emits. It is heavily doped and it is medium in size. Heavily doped, medium emits leftmost. Base, middle part, sandwich between E and C, lightly doped and very thin. Collector, rightmost part, it collects the 
carrier, the majority carrier which are coming from the emitter. Large size, moderately doped. There are two junction. Junction between emitter and base is known as emitter base junction. The junction between collector and base is known as base collector junction. Do we understand this? Just have to note it down. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes. Note them down very, very carefully. Well, as I said, transistors are of uh, two types, NPN, where between two N, one P is sandwiched. Do we see this? Yes, sir. Left-hand side, emitter, middle, base, right-hand side, collector. Do we see this? Yes, sir. NPN, the direction of this current is from P to N. Do we see this? Yes. Similarly, P and P. N is sandwiched between two P. P and P. We can again look at the direction. It's from P to N. Do we understand this? Yes. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Okay, then we move ahead and we see how does a uh, transistor work. And we will see a very particular uh, type of working of this transistor. And don't worry. It might look like a bit confusing in the beginning. But if you understand it, and I will tell you, you will be able to understand the working of a NPN transistor now. What you have to see here, there are a few points that you must understand. Uh, we all understand that uh, this is emitter, this is base, and this is collector. Do we see this? Yes. Okay. Now, this base is common to emitter and collector. Therefore, this is known as common base configuration. Do we understand this? Yes. This is known as? common base configuration. In this common base configuration, you can see that emitter base junction. Can you tell me the biasing of emitter base junction? Is it forward biased or is it reverse biased? Looking at emitter and base, can you tell me whether it is forward biased or is it reverse biased? This is N, which is connected here. This is P, it is connected here. Can you tell me emitter base junction? Emitter base, is it forward biased or is it reverse biased? Forward. Is it forward biased or is it reverse biased? Tell me. Forward biased. It is forward bias. Now look at the base collector junction, my dear friends. Base collector BC, base collector junction. Is reverse bias. This is connected to negative terminal, my dear friends. This is connected to positive terminal, my dear friends. So what type of biasing is this? Reverse bias. Now, if emitter base is forward bias and collector base is reverse bias, we see that this transistor, this transistor is in its active zone. This transistor is in its which zone? Active zone. You can see emitter base is forward bias. Do we understand this? Yes. Sir. Collector base is reverse bias. Such is known as active mode and this is a common base configuration in active mode. Do we understand this? 
Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Now, in this case, common base active mode, you can see oops, what has happened here. Active mode, common base, you can see this emitter current, i.e., will be more than the collector current. In fact, if you apply Kirchhoff junction law at this point, if you apply Kirchhoff junction law at this point, if you apply Kirchhoff junction law at this point, the emitter current will be equal to base current plus the collector current. Do we understand this? Yes. This is what you need to remember. NPN transistor active zone. What is forward biasing? What is reverse biasing? In active mode, it is emitter base junction is forward bias. Base collector junction is reverse bias. Emitter current, IE, will be equal to IB plus IC. We understand this? Yes. Sir. I'll give you two minutes to note down everything. Now you can see this is the working of a PNP transistor. Remember whether it's an NPN transistor or whether it's a PNP transistor. They work in the same way. Here you can see two P's sandwiching one end. Do we see this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Between two P's, we have got N and which type of configuration is this? Which is common? What type of configuration is this? N is common base, common base. So this is a common base configuration as you can see. This is a common base configuration as you can see. Can you tell me what type of biasing is there? Emitter base junction. What type of biasing is there? Forward biasing. It is forward biased. Base collector. Reverse biased. It is reverse biased. This type of biasing is known as active, bias. active mode. The transistor, the PNP transistor is in its active mode. Do we understand this? Yes. Sir. Now here also, if you look at this emitter current, collector current and base current, and if you apply your Kirchhoff junction law at this point, you will still find out that this emitter current IE will be equal to IB plus IC. So no matter whether which configuration you are talking about, I mean, which type of transistor you are talking about, the emitter current is always equal to base plus collector current. Do we see this in common base configuration? Do we see this? Yes. I'll give you a minute to draw it. If you can draw it on your own, it's very good. Now, as you see, in a transistor, there are three term terminals which are available, emitter, base, and collector. But if we want to connect it to an external circuit, we need four terminals. We don't have four terminals. We only have three terminals. So what we do is we make one of these common. We either we make base common or we make emitter common or we make collector common and therefore we have three types of configuration. The first and the most commonly used configuration is common emitter. Then we have common base and the last one which is very rarely used is common collector CE, CB and CC. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Then there are four modes of operation of this uh, 
transistor the first one is known as active mode this is the mode in which we will find most of the problems that we face active mode then it is known as the saturation mode in this mode maximum collector current flows and the transistor acts as a closed switch these are the two points that you must remember about the saturation mode the cutoff mode it behaves like an open switch in inverse mode basically the emitter and base are interchange you must also remember the biasing of these active mode emitter base is forward bias collector base is reverse bias saturation mode both are forward bias cut off mode everything has to be cut off both are reverse bias inverse mode you just inverse the original one and you get the inverse mode do we understand this you will have to remember all these points can you remember them yes I'll give you a minute to note this down. This chapter is all about remembering. That is why I'm giving you time to note things down calmly, quietly, so that you can remember them. Also remember these uh, points which we have already discussed. Remember, emitter, medium size, highly doped, base, smallest size, lowest doping, Collector, largest size, medium doping. Why collector is physically large? Remember, then the emitter, because collector has to dissipate much great power. It collects all the current. It must dissipate the maximum power. All the transistors always work in active region. Remember, so whenever we are the talking about transistor, they will be working in active region. Active region means emitter base is forward bias, collector base is reverse bias. Transistor, the short form is transfer register. So it transfers the register. Signal is introduced at low resistance and output is taken as high resistance. I told you that, yes or no? Yes. Base is very lightly doped. Otherwise, most of the charge carrier from the emitter will combine and not reach the collector. Transistor is a current operated device that means the action of transistor is controlled by the motion of charge carriers that is the current when i say current what it means is when current in the emitter changes the current in the collector will also change do we understand this yes so basically <clears throat> It is a current operated device and if you change the current or you change the input, the output will change. We need to transfer the input from a low resistance to high resistance. That is the main concept. And To have that thing, we must be controlling the output by controlling the input. When the current in the emitter is changed, correspondingly the current in the collector will change. Always there is an input port and an output port. The output port is controlled by the input port. This is the other way of saying, saying the same thing. Do we understand this? Yes. What is the function of a transistor? Transfer register. It transfers current or signal from low resistance to high resistance. Do we understand this? And therefore, collector is very large because it has to dissipate a large amount of power. Write each word carefully in your own language, understand them. Most of the questions will be based on theory. If you don't understand this, you will not be able to solve the questions also. Now we come to the most uh, interesting and the last aspect of uh, this uh, transistor is characteristics or transistor configuration. And we will see the configuration. Do you understand uh, what the what the CB configuration mean? 
What do you mean by CB configuration? CB configuration stands for which one? Common base configuration. Base is common. You can see base is common to both emitter and collector. Do we see this? Yes, sir. What type of transistor is this? Is this a PNP type or is it a NPN type? Sir, it is PNP type. It is a PNP type. So this is PNP type in common base configuration. In which mode is this operating? Out of the four modes, which mode is this operating? Which mode this transistor is? Active mode. It is in the active mode in 99% of the cases. You will have transistor always in the active mode. And whenever it is in the active mode, we draw its graph, which are known as its characteristics. So that is what we are going to draw. Let's, let's first have some uh, terms. You can see this IE. This is known as the input current. Do we understand this? Yes. Sir. It is on the input side. VBE, this is the input voltage. We understand this. We call it VB or EVP, doesn't matter. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Then we have this as the output voltage. Output is taken across the load. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Then we have this IC, which is known as the output current. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. If we change the input voltage, the input current will change rapidly and therefore the output current will also change. Do we understand this? Yes. You can see emitter base is forward bias and collector base is reverse bias. Do we see this? Yes. Sir. I'll give you two minutes to draw this diagram. Well then, uh, as you can see, we have to study the characteristics of uh, this common base configuration. Now, to understand or to study the characteristics, the input characteristics, what we do, we keep the output voltage, which is VCB as constant. You have to remember this. We will keep the output voltage constant and we will draw a graph between the input current and the input voltage. This is the input current and this is the input voltage and you will have to remember how does the graph look. This is how the graph looks. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. You'll have to remember this. The input characteristics of NPN will be similar, but the direction of current will change and VEB will change. Do we understand this? So the characteristics are same. We understand this? Yes, sir. Then there is a thing that you must remember. Input dynamic resistance Whenever we use the term dynamic, it is always change in the value of voltage divided by the change in the value of current. Input voltage is delta V, E, B. Input current is delta I, E. You divide them, you get the input dynamic input resistance. You will have to remember these terms and there is no escaping from this fact. How do I draw the input characteristic curve? I keep the output voltage constant and I draw the graph between IE and VEB. Do we understand this? Yes. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Then uh, we must now draw the output characteristics. Now to draw the output characteristics, we keep the input constant. When I say input, we keep emitter current constant. You'll have to remember this. And then we draw the output characteristics graph for different, different uh, input currents. What is the output current? Output current and output voltage. Then we have dynamic output resistance, change in the output voltage divided by change in the 
आउटपुट का नहीं डू वी अंडरस्टैंड दिस यस सर नोट इट डाउन द ग्राफ दे विल आस्क यू द ग्राफ एंड द फॉर्मूला you can note down these uh, formulae when we use this as an amplifier which is one of the use of um, transistor we have different different terms the first term is known as the ac current gain small change in output current divided by small change in input current ac current gain then you have dc current gain alpha dc collector current divided by emitter current output divided by input do you understand this yes voltage gain is the change in output voltage divided by change in input voltage so your voltage gain can be written as alpha ac into resistance gain how much is the gain in resistance output resistance divided by input resistance do we understand this yes You have to note down this formula. Power gain will be alpha square into resistance gain. Change in output power divided by change in input power. Gain is always output divided by input. Transistor means transfer of resistance. Resistance is gained. So current is gained and power is gained. Do we understand this? Yes. Sir. Give you two minutes to note this down. and we come to the next configuration which is ce configuration do you understand the meaning of ce common emitter common emitter configuration you can see emitter is common here no matter what happens if you apply the kirchhoff junction law at this point you will find that ie will be equal to ib plus ic this is the most widely used configuration here the input is between the emitter and the base the variation of the base current with base voltage is called the input characteristics the output current divided by output voltage is known as the output characteristic you just have to write this draw this and note down the important points so we understand this yes sir then we have the input characteristics as we have seen we will keep the output voltage vce as same and we will draw a current we will draw a graph between input current which is ib and input voltage and this is a graph the dynamic input resistance is change in input voltage divided by change in input current at common at constant output voltage do we understand this the graph yes. looks like this i'll give you a minute to note this down remember this entire chapter is about remembering things the more the things you can remember the better you are going to be then we move on to the next is the output characteristics to find out the output characteristic we keep the base current which is the input current as constant at different different input currents keeping it constant we plot a graph between the output current ic and the output voltage vce the change in the value of output voltage by the change in the value of output current is known as dynamic output resistance do we understand this yes sir draw the graph then you can note down these formula for current gain ac current gain and dc current gain here it is known as beta in common emitter it is known as beta the ac current gain is change in output divided by change in input at constant output voltage this is how it is defined you can't change the definition dc current gain is output current divided by input current ac voltage gain is output voltage divided by input voltage so you can write it as beta multiplied by resistance gain similarly you can write the formula for power gain it is exactly the same as what we had seen there is a small term that is introduced here which is known as transconductance which is the inverse of resistance 
change in output current divided by change in input voltage that is emitter base input voltage so you can write it as av by rl where rl is the load resistance you will have to remember all these formulae and the most important one on which most of the question that you will see 99 to 100% of the question will be based on this formula the relation between beta and alpha beta is the current gain in common emitter alpha is the current gain in common base do we remember this do we understand this yes sir you have to remember these formula questions if they are going to come are going to come from this yellow marked thing I'll give you a minute to note this down then we can move ahead and write all the three things the third one we have not seen we just a repetition c b c e and c c do you understand the meaning of c b c and c c yes sir you don't have to draw this if you don't it's a save time you have already drawn this current gain in the first case is i c by i e remember collector current is always less than the emitter current so this is less than 1 you'll have to remember this then we have in this case it is known as beta i c by i b and the third case it is known as gamma do we understand this yes sir similarly you will have the formula for voltage gain here voltage gain here and voltage gain here you can write it as alpha into output uh, alpha into output uh, resistance divided by input resistance do we understand this yes sir i'll give you 2 minutes to note it down fast then you have the remaining formula for power gain so just write those formulas for power gain together phase difference remember in common base and common collector the output is in the same phase but in common emitter it is in the opposite phase remember these things common base is used for high frequency common collector a common emitter for audible frequency and common collector for impedance matching common collector is only used for impedance matching you have to remember it note it down first then this table tells us all the possible relations between alpha beta and gamma the more the way in which you can remember all these relations because any one question is going to come which would utilize any one of these relations if you can remember just one relation between alpha beta one relation between alpha and gamma you should be able to make out all the relation i have given you all the possible iterations relation between alpha and beta between beta and gamma between gamma and alpha and all the more the number of ways in which you can remember this the better it is going to be for you i'll give you a minute to note this down so we move ahead now and note down these four points again any one of these points can come as a question in your exam in transistor the charge carrier move from emitter to collector this can only happen when emitter base junction is forward bias and collector base junction is reverse bias remember reverse bias is high as compared to forward bias common emitter configuration is most commonly used in amplifier negative feedback is used all these are all these are uh, knowledge based question common collector is used for impedance matching any one of these can come as a question in your exam so please mark them then this is a very simple question in a transistor the value of beta is 50 find out the value of alpha and give you a minute to solve this by 50 alpha can be simply written as my dear friends beta upon beta plus 1 so it will be 50 upon 51 which is coming approximately equal to 0.9a do we understand this yes sir well done then this is a question taken from your uh, your uh, je main of 
2022 and you can remember it's all about remembering things and putting them in the correct perspective the correct relation between alpha and beta is my dear friends which one do you think is the answer here which one do you think is the answer here my dear friends uh, option four option four alpha is beta upon one plus beta are we able to understand this everyone able to understand this yes or no no yes we got this yes sir then you have again a similar question from JEE -E of 2022 which is the correct relation my dear friends which is the correct relation my dear friends what is the answer now as you can see if you can remember okay. simple things in life life is going to be Pretty straightforward. And what is the answer? Option two, sir. Just beta? Option two. Option two. Beta is up is equal to alpha upon one minus alpha. Are we able to understand what is happening here? Yes, sir. Everyone is able to understand. Yes or no? No, yes. Yes, sir. Let me give you one more question. Let me first start with this one so that you can have a knowledge about these types of questions as well. Again, this is from JEE -E of 2022. <clears throat> and this is the question. If an emitter current, this is JEE -E 2022. If an emitter current is changed by 4 milliamperes, the collector current changes by 3.5 milliamperes. What is the value of beta? And you have two minutes to give me the answer. So how are we supposed to do this? You must know that emitter current is equal to base current plus collector current. Do we know this? Yes, sir. Now, if I differentiate this, I will get the change in emitter current will be equal to the change in base current plus change in collector current yes or no this is given as 4 milliampere this is given as 3.5 milliampere so from here oops i can get the change in the base current change in the base current would be my dear friend 0 0.5 milliampere Am I correct? Yes. They have not asked you what is the change in the base current. They have asked you the value of beta. Can anyone tell me what was the value of beta? Sir, I... Um, uh, collector current by... Yes, yeah, so you can write it as change in collector current divided by change in the base current. Yes. So, change in collector current is 3.5, change in the base current is 0 0.5. So, Option. the answer that you will get, my dear friends, would be coming as 7. Do we understand this? Yes. That was the answer that I was looking for. I hope you have understood the concept. I hope you have understood the concept I hope you have understood the concept. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Let me see if you can solve this question based on graphs. From JE of 2022, the typical output characteristic curve for a transistor working in the common emitter configuration is given like this. Can you find out the current gain from this? Current gain, my dear friends. Current gain. Current what? 
current gain you have to find out gain in current remember it's a common emitter configuration so you have to find out the value of beta do you understand this yes sir so you can write it as change in the output current divided by the change in input current output is the collector current and input is the base current yes or no yes sir now looking at the change in the output current you can see that the change in the output current is how much two two not two two into ten raised to the power minus three which is milliampere divided by what is the change in the base current can you tell me what is the change in the base current my dear friend what is the change in the base current my dear friends not ten not ten my dear friends ten into ten raised to the power minus six if you divide these two things and if you just call them two and ten you will end up with a perfectly wrong answer. The value of beta should be coming as 200 and not as 0.5, which was the answer according to you. So please remember that you have to also keep in mind the units because this all calculations are pretty simple, but if you don't carry about the if you don't worry about the units the units are going to give you absolutely wrong answer do we understand this yes sir. this is the next one they have drawn a graph for the forward bias diode characteristics shown in the figure the dynamic resistance dynamic resistance dynamic resistance dynamic resistance dynamic resistance dynamic resistance at three amperes is how much So how are we going to find out the dynamic resistance? Remember, dynamic resistance is change in the voltage divided by change in current, yes or no? Yes. Between these two points, you can find out how much is the change in voltage. How much is the change in voltage? Can you tell me, my dear friends? How much is the change in voltage? 0 0.1, sir. 0 0.1, very well done. And what is the change in the current, my dear friends, from here to here? Four years. You divide okay. this and you get your answer, and the answer that is given is twenty-five ohms. Uh, do we understand this? Yes or no? No. Yes. Everyone understands this. Yes, sir. Everyone understands this. Yes, sir. One more question. Based on statement one, statement two, assertion and reasoning. Statement one is given, statement two is given, and you have to tell me which option is correct. These are the type of questions that are more likely to come in an examination hall. Statement one, by doping silicon semiconductor with pentavalent, the electrons density increase. Statement two, the n-type semiconductor has negative charge. Which option is correct, my dear friends? Which option is correct, my dear friends? Which option is correct, my dear friends? And the option is option one, statement A is true, statement B is false. I told you there is no net charge, whether it's an N-type semiconductor or a P-type semiconductor. Do we remember this? Yes, sir. Remember this. Thank God we remember this. Let me now move on to the next uh, uh, question again. Assertion and reasoning, we call it statement one, statement two. They will do everything. The only thing you have to remember is to remember things. The only thing you have to forget is the habit of forgetting things. Statement one, to get a steady DC output from a pulsating voltage received from a full wave rectifier, we can connect a capacitor. Statement two, we can connect an indicator. Uh, we can connect an indi uh, inductor. Which option 
is correct, my dear friends, and I wait patiently for your answers. Should we connect a capacitor or should we connect an inductor? Or should we connect both or should we connect one and not the second one? I've given you the answer already. We can do it by connecting a capacitor. We can also do it by connecting a inductor. Therefore, option four is correct here. So remember, I told you about the filter circuit. Do we remember that filter circuit? Yes. So you can make a filter circuit by either connecting a capacitor or my dear friends, you can also connect an inductor and have the same effect. And now I move on to the last question from the semiconductor chapter. Semiconductor chapter as such would be over and tomorrow we shall start with logic gates here is the last question again all these questions that i'm doing are from your previous year specifically they are from uh, 2022 paper list matching list one list two tell me which is the correct option rectifier stabilizer transformer filter tell me which is the correct answer your time starts now and do it fast because the time is not there in your hands which is the correct option i don't know Take, uh, i think uh, transformer is used to step in down so you can just see what you know you know what is a rectifier? Do you know what is a rectifier? Used to, used to convert AC to DC. Used to convert AC to DC. Even if you don't know, the rest of them, you know what is a filter. The filter is to remove any ripple. So A should be 2 and D should be 3. And the only option which matches is option A. So option A is the correct option, my dear friends. And with this, we come to an end of this fascinating chapter on semiconductors, starting from P and N type, starting from intrinsic to extrinsic P and N type. We have covered with everything, every type of question that is physically possible. I have covered it now. Now the ball is in your court. And I hope that you play it nicely. Because now the things are in your hands. We'll meet tomorrow and we will do the next chapter, next topic, which is logic gates. Take care and have a very nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir.